Time to look at another interesting product. AEX ZR Car Stealth Jammer. Invisible driving, maximum freedom. AEX ZR Car Stealth Jammer. Redefining your road experience. Tired of pesky speed cameras, traffic light cameras, and invasive illegal parking sensors? Elevate your driving experience to a whole new level of privacy with the AEX ZR Car Stealth Jammer. Our cutting edge device not only shields you from unwanted signals, but also boasts a unique radio jamming function that renders your car practically invisible to speed cameras, traffic light cameras, and illegal parking sensors. So I I didn't buy them from the official source. This is going to be a very expensive product because uh, just before we go any further, I could start telling you that it uses uh, broad spectrum RF missions to block uh, activity of cameras, but they're fake. I'll just be up front with this. They're fake. Uh, I bought mine off eBay, so obviously, you know, mine will be fake. And uh, it was a lot cheaper, but they are the same thing because it's a standard product. And we'll just do the quick checklist of the main ingredients here. PLC. Nope. Relay group. Nope. High voltage package. Nope. Microwave power supply. Nope. Magnetron group. Nope. Plastic shell. Yes, it wins. Plastic shell. Excellent. So, in case you've not worked it out, these are very common on eBay. I'll zoom down a bit. These are very common fake car alarms. If I turn them both on, and interestingly, watch the LED in this when I turn it on. See, it does a double flash before it goes into, well, when I block it, it when I block the light from the solar panel on top, which it's used as a light sensor and for charging the cell, by the look of it, uh, it goes into its little blinky light mode, and that is all it does. If you put this in the dashboard of your car and think it's going to let you drive through speed cameras and traffic light cameras, you're, you're in for a very expensive set of fines. So let's take a look inside one. Uh, we shall pick a random one and open it up. I think I'll open this one. It's got the blue LED in it. That's quite nice. So I don't see screws. Where is my sp where is my spudger? I have misplaced my spudger. I have actually misplaced my spudger. What have I done with it? Uh, let's perhaps use an alternative tool. No, I'm going to pause and find the spudger. One moment. The spudger has been located. That's what I get for tidying up. So I'm not sure if this is glued together or other, because it doesn't look like it's kind of part too easily. Although I can see little pillars here, which kind of makes me think it might be stuck together just with like friction. But I've just mashed that USB port. That's all right. I'm not too bothered and I'm not too excited about these. I certainly won't be putting it in the dashboard. Ooh, that is tight. Maybe I should try the other one. No, this is not coming apart, is it? I think it might be glued. Uh, let me try something else here. Wedge a screwdriver in and just... Force that up, ruining the connector in the process. But let's face it, it doesn't matter. That worked. That worked. So... This is now popping off nicely. It's just held in with little plastic friction fit pins. What are we going to get? Actually, that one has broken off in there, so maybe it was glued. What are we going to get here? We're getting the solar panel. A little lithium cell, which is different from the other ones. The other ones often contain a little tiny nickel metal hydride cell and a standard uh, solar flasher chip like for beacons. Um, and I'm guessing that might be a charge control chip and that might be a little mic controller or vice versa. We shall find out. Tell you what, I'll take a picture of this and we can explore it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore this marvellous uh, camera jamming device. So there's a USB port, and it comes in via a diode, uh, but also signals over to the microcontroller via a resistor. We've got the switch, which basically disconnects the positive from the battery. Uh, and we've got uh, the solar panel connections and a little Schottky diode for those for charging the battery, uh, a cell protection device, um, and then just a smashing of resistors and stuff um, for 
sensing dusk and for uh, the stability of the signal over the little cell protector. It's nice they've got the cell protector, but not nice there's absolutely no current limiting on the USB charge circuitry. Uh, and that is it. There is another LED position over here. The one over there has a 51 ohm resistor in series with it. This one has no resistor in series with it. I'm not sure why. Maybe it was just an option that they could put one in without a resistor for extra brightness if they were just relying on the current limiting of the microcontroller. Let's take a look at the schematic. You may notice the complete lack of RF circuitry owing to the fact this is such a fake device. So there's the solar panel. If we take a look at that one, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 cells. So let's say 4.5 volt roughly. 4.5 volt solar panel. And that has the Schottky diode and it goes over to the lithium cell with its protective protection circuit, a 3130. And it's got little filter across it, 30 ohm and 100 nano. That's usually 100 ohm and 100 nano. I don't know why they've used those values. But the solar cell also has a voltage divider across it with the dusk sensor going to the chip and that just tells the chip when it's dark and it should start flashing the LED. The USB supply simply goes to the lithium cell via a diode so it's relying entirely on the resistance of the charge cable and the um, impedance of the tracks which isn't that high for this tiny little cell so it's you know a resistor on the usb would have been a really great thing you know just one put about here would have been a great thing they could have put it there it doesn't really matter they could have put a resistor in series to limit the current um, the usb is also monitored via this 10k resistor going straight over to the microcontroller um which uh, indicates to the microcontroller it's charging. And if you plug it in while it's charging and it's turned on, all that happens is the LED just lights continually. I think that's all it does. I don't think it has anything else for monitoring. Then we've got a switch over to the microcontroller and we've got the LED and a 51 ohm resistor and that is it. So, as I say, this thing's going to be very, very expensive if you buy it from the original source, not just in terms of the... Uh, cost of buying it but also the fines you're going to get afterwards if you get sort of loose on the the accelerator um but that's it it's just another fake car alarm being sold as fake molecular de-icers and fake camera jammers and just everything else ebay and the internet in general is full of scams you just have to be very aware of this these days but there we go Interesting enough, interesting design, not a great design, but an interesting design and well worth taking apart.